Hi. In this video, we're going to talk about writing in a classical period style. But in order to do that, we're going to take a little snippet from the Music Matters theme, which will be quite familiar to you, I'm sure. But you know the theme that you can hear on the beginning of the videos. <laughs> So that's in a particular style, isn't it? But here, we're going to set ourselves the challenge of thinking, could we present the first phrase of that theme in a style that sounds as if it belongs to the classical period? Well, it's what I've tried to do here. So in a way, you've got some features in the melody that seem slightly strange for the classical style, like having these syncopated figures that where you've got tied notes there across the middle of the bar that are a little bit more jazzy than we often find in classical style. Nevertheless, we can cope with them. In classical style, there's a kind of emphasis on simplicity, elegance, harmony that's often not too complicated, certain particular textures which we're going to explore, but quite often not great big thick chords like you might find in the Romantic period. And remember that a lot of classical music was written by composers like Haydn for dukes and princes, members of the aristocracy. So the music is quite polite. It's not over emotional. The classical period is a kind of rebellion against the over ornate style of the Baroque period as they saw it. So we've got to try and bear all these things in mind when we write. Sometimes we have little decorations. So, for example, this F sharp is a chromatic lower auxiliary note. Well, that sort of thing might well belong to classical style, so we can use that to our advantage. We can do things like impose a turn at the cadence. Very well defined cadences in classical period music, often a four bar phrase, which is kind of a unit in itself, but often answered by another four bar phrase. So you have a kind of question and answer where the posh words are the antecedent and consequent phrases. So this could be an antecedent that's going to be followed by the next phrase. And so we're marking it out with a well-defined cadence here. In this case, an imperfect cadence. So we're starting in the tonic key, we're going to an imperfect cadence. So the next phrase could take us on possibly coming back to the tonic key again with a little turn figure imposed on the cadence just to make it a little bit more classical. Sometimes in classical period music, you expect to see a little bit more space in the texture. You don't have to harmonize every single corner of it. So you notice in bar three, I've placed a chord in the left hand and just have the rest of the bar as a rest. So we just have those single notes in the right hand. And you'll notice in the first two bars, what I've done there, trying to keep the harmony reasonably straightforward, but I've got some figuration in the left hand in the form of the Alberti bass. Now the Alberti bass is when you take a chord and you go root, fifth, third, fifth, root, fifth, third, fifth, and you sort of carry on like that. And you'll notice in terms of the harmony, I'm not trying to make it over complicated, but I am going to use a little harmonic device here. You'll notice that all these notes in bar one belong to chord one. So we're not trying to overcomplicate the harmony if it's in classical style. All those notes happen to fit in nicely with chord one. You've got the chromatic lower auxiliary with the F sharp, but all the other notes belong to chord one in E flat major, E flat, G, B flat, so that's okay. You'll notice here, I've got chord one B, but this time not as an Alberti, but as a block chord. So we're running Alberti for a couple of bars, then we're having a block chord to break that cycle a little bit and having a greater sense of simplicity at the cadence, not quite so involved at the cadence. You might be intrigued by what I'm doing with this chord because if we're in E flat major, well, what's going on here? It's sort of looking like D, F, A flat going on there. And I've also got a C thrown in there. So that's an interesting one. So what's D, F, A flat? Well. I've got it as in this format, haven't I? F in the bass, A flat and D. But if I put that back into the D, F, A flat basic position, that's a chord seven. Now, often we are told not to use chord seven because it sounds a little bit ugly when it 
it's in its root position. But the great thing about chord seven is it sounds really good in first inversion. So if you want to use a seven, any kind of diminished chord, that's seven in a major key or seven or two in a minor key, it's usually a good idea to use them in first inversion rather than in root position. So what I'm doing here is I've got chord one, I've got seven in first inversion, seven B, and I've just sort of spruced it up a little bit because that C makes it a seven seven, which is a little bit richer. I've had to sort of do that to accommodate the given melody to some extent, but it, it fits in quite nicely. But one, seven B, one B. So this, is part of a formula that we know from something called the passing 6-4. Now, if you know about the passing 6-4, that's great. If you don't, we've got some material out there that will explain that to you on YouTube. Um, but quite often you've got this passing 6-4 where you go 1, 5C, 1B, or the other way around, 1B, 5C, 1. But if you want to replace the 5C with a 7B, then you can do that. That's exactly what I've done here. So. It's a fairly kind of standard chord progression from Baroque and classical times. But I've got one chord per bar here, so I'm trying to keep it simple, so I'm not overcomplicating the harmony. One, then I'm going for this 7B, I'm just sprucing it up by making it 7, 7B. Then I'm going to 1B, having a nice little break there, and then here at the cadence I'm going 1C5. Often at a cadence, the harmonic rhythm is a little bit faster than it is earlier on, and that's something else we see in the classical style. So I've thought about the harmony. I've got the passing 6-4, the passing 6-4 replacement, as it were, in there. And you can see what I've thought about with the texture. I'm trying to clarify the cadence. And let's see if after all of that, by imposing the Alberti bass on it, putting a little turn figure in there to make it sort of, that's a bit of a classical period hallmark, the turn figure, does it sound anything like a classical period piece? Well, there we are. Have another listen. So you see how we've managed to take that theme, which was never written by me in the first place as a classical period theme, but we've managed to present it in a classical style. So there we are. I hope that's a useful thing in just thinking, how would I present something in that kind of style?